Welcome back, everyone. If you've ever hired a contractor to renovate your home, you probably learned a thing or two about how the process works. But sometimes, if you don't do your homework, you can end up with a series of unfortunate events. I've been there. Gene Kennedy is a national home improvement expert from Saltwater Home Resources, and he's here with tips on asking the right questions and getting the proper information before you bring these contractors into your home. Gene, welcome to Daytime. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about things that we should all do. What, how do we know what we're getting and and what are some of the questions we should be asking before we hire somebody? Well, checking the state license, make sure that it's an active license, and insurance is the biggest thing. We find contractors don't carry the proper insurance or not enough of it, especially workers' comp. If somebody were to get hurt on your job site, that's when you become liable as a homeowner against an injury. I had somebody actually refer a friend of his who he said he was going to be great. It turned mm -hmm. out to be the worst experience I've ever had. Right. So you can't just go on on anecdotal friends saying, hey, this guy's good, hire him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've heard those stories before. And uh, you want to get your bids. They always say get three bids. That's like the magic thing. Um, Cheap work isn't good, good work isn't cheap. So you want to make sure you find a, a good contractor with a good price that fits your needs. Maybe one that's factory backed by a manufacturer. So if you have an issue with a, with a product and, they man, and, a, and a contractor won't cover it, mm -hmm. you can always get it, the manufacturer to help you out with it. What about money? Because I've had contractors say, I need X amount up front. And I don't like doing anything up front, but I understand if they need mm -hmm. money to get the materials and do what they have to do. So how, how, how do you figure that out? Well, draw schedules are normal in the construction industry, so it, it's okay to give a small deposit to get started, but you probably don't want to give too much, and you don't want to let a contractor get way, way ahead of you. Um, then you have problems, like you said, with timing and getting out there on time, and you know, don't, don't give too much, right. obviously. But check the contractor, make sure they're legit, licensing, insurance, that's the biggest key to get you in the right direction. One of the biggest complaints I've heard from most people who've had people go in and, and renovate is the timeline. Mm -hmm. When they're told, well, we, we guesstimate we'll be done here, and then I hear this nightmare story, it's been four months, I haven't been able to use my kitchen. Right. So how do we prevent that from happening? Well, construction is a major event on a house. It does take time. Most contractors give an unrealistic life uh, uh, span of time and, and cut themselves too short. So be realistic about it. And if it is going to take five to six weeks, get it in writing. And as we talked before, if it's in writing, then you have something to go on. And maybe a penalty if they don't make a certain timeline. Mm. Uh, and again, don't get too far, too much money ahead. With the contractor. For our viewers in the Northeast, Sandy was mm -hmm. devastating. A lot of people need to have repairs done. What advice yes. do you have for them right now? Well, having worked all the storms from Andrew to Katrina, I've seen all too many times that, that type of devastation. Um, picking a contractor that's probably local in your area, right now, after the cleanup, the first responders leave, then the contractors will start coming in from out of state. And you don't know what you're going to get. Right. And you may get a contract that's not licensed. You may get a guy that's just a handyman, doesn't really know what he's doing, but thinking he's going to make a big, big pot full of money in, in an area. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you check. It's a local contractor. Check references if you can. We understand it's devastation, but you know, try to do your research and make sure it is a local company. I need some advice for a mistake that I made in the past, but I never want to make it again. I had a guy come in. He renovated cost more than expected, went longer than expected, mm -hmm. uh, tightened something just a little too tight underneath the sink. Next thing I know, uh, there's a basically a rainstorm in the basement and right. the whole place is flooded. Right. What should I have done at that point? Because he was totally, I'm not accountable. No, it's not my fault. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we've all made mistakes. If you get a contractor that says they're perfect, well, everybody's made mistakes. Right. It's how you handle the mistake. W ask what the, what the response time would be if you had a warranty issue. Mm -hmm. 24 hours, 48 hours. Do they have a number that's on standby? Um, if they're a cell phone contractor, you may not get them. You know, you want to find somebody who maybe has an office or an address that so you can maybe go by and see them. Make right. sure they're a legitimate contractor. And make sure they're insured. And make sure they're insured. <laughs> and check with the licensing board, especially here in Florida. You can go on uh, florida.gov, uh, mm -hmm. put in a name or even a license number, and it'll tell you if they're current or not. That's good to know. Yeah. It's also good to know if they have a criminal record. Absolutely. That's important Absolutely. to know. Gene Kennedy, thank you very much. Good thank advice. You. All right, still ahead. Don't just slap on the foundation. Oh, no, no, we're getting a lesson in primer, and we'll find out how that can make a dramatic difference on your face. We'll be right back.